beautiful Mora Valley, my father's homeland, my family's querencia. I'm Rob Martinez, I'm State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. I am in Mora, New Mexico, uh, the land of my father's family, and behind me is a little porch where we used to have a vendible, a little place to sell Mexican food during Mora fiestas. I was a little kid, five years old, and they'd set me up on a, a little shelf there and have me yell, burritos, tamales. We had a lot of fun. My grandma and grandpa were here, my cousins, uh, my mom and dad, my brother and sisters. Uh, those were great times, but Mora has a great history. This area was known uh, to the Comanche, uh, the Apache, the Navajo people, but also to the Pueblo people of Picuris uh, for centuries before there were ever any Hispanic people here. It's quite amazing. Uh, people started coming here from Peñasco in the early 1800s with names like Mascareñas, Romero, Martin, Lovato, and um, the earliest document I've seen is from 1815 uh, during the uh, colonial Mexican period. The Spanish governor uh, sent a document to the priest at Picuris to uh, administer um, sacraments to the people at Lo de Mora. This area was called Lo de Mora. I'm not sure where that comes from. Some people think it's a corruption of a French term. It might mean that it just belonged to a person named Mora, surname Mora, which I think is the most correct uh, uh, explanation. Mora is a surname. Also, it means a female Moor. A Moro is a, a, a Moor and a female Moor is a Mora. So that's also a where the name might have come from. It also means a blackberry. So, Lo de Mora. Um, finally, we get a land grant under the Mexican government under Albino Perez in 1835. A communal grant is here. Um, the first uh, Mascareñas was uh, Miguel Mascareñas and later his brother, my ancestor, Pablo Mascareñas, comes here uh, bringing my family here, at least my dad's maternal family. So. I have amazing memories of this place. It has quite a history. Um, in 1847, during the U.S.-Mexican War, about 80 U.S. soldiers came into this valley to subdue uh, the Mexican people of Mora because there was a revolt at Taos. Well, the people of Mora killed all those American soldiers. That would have been about January of 1847. So about a week later, a lot more Americans came and they raised and burned Mora to the ground. Since then, the people here always have had a certain um, suspicion about outsiders and Americans, but they're very friendly. Uh, my people here, uh, I love this place. It has a brilliant history. Uh, I hope you can come out and see this place. This is uh, uh, Lo de Mora, established uh, officially in 1835, but people were here a lot earlier. Um, we know that uh, if, if you go that way behind me towards Las Vegas, you'll hit the uh, Llanos, the plains, and the Vegas, the meadows, and that's where a lot of Indian wars would come into this valley. And my dad used to tell me there was a place called uh, El Banquito de los Apaches, where the, uh, they would camp out and hit their drums and light fires to intimidate the people here. And um, my great great grandpa, uh, Felipe Lovato, and all the other men would get on horses and they would chase the Native American people out of here. A very rough history, uh, sometimes violent very vibrant, but that is Mora, New Mexico. I'm Rob Martinez, coming to you live from El Norte, Mora, New Mexico. Hasta pronto. Beautiful little chapel of San Rafael near La Cueva in Mora County.
This is La Cueva Mill, built around 1851 by Vicente Romero. Um, they say he used to sleep in caves while tending his sheep, so that's where you get the name La Cueva. But this old building is a beautiful example of mid-19th century architecture, blending American technology with the Spanish and Mexican adobe uh, construction materials. No, this isn't Durant, Wyoming. This is Las Vegas, New Mexico, where Longmire was filmed. Uh, my mom's family's from here, and this town has a really interesting history. Um, this is the plaza, the old Mexican part of town. Uh, just east of here is the new town. And this area was officially settled in 1835 when Albino Perez, Mexican governor, granted land to settlers that came up here from places like San Miguel del Vado, um, Pecos, and before that Santa Fe and points beyond. Um, this place in the uh, 1800s from 1835 till about oh, 1910 was a very a lawless place. I'm pretty convinced that uh, Billy the Kid spent some time here. This is also the town that uh, uh, Stephen Carney entered when he uh, brought his Army of the West to take New Mexico from Mexico during the U.S.-Mexican War. So there's a lot of deep and rich history, a lot of cowboy history here. But again, a lot of Mexican history because the folks that settled here were from parts of New Mexico when this was Mexico. Uh, right behind me is the Plaza Hotel. Uh, uh, Western type hotel that's been renovated recently and if you see this uh, amazing plaza it's quite uh, American looking it shows that we uh, were definitely conquered and colonized by the United States uh, in the 1840s and 1850s so um, this is Las Vegas New Mexico so that's the Mora Valley and Las Vegas, New Mexico. I have really fond memories of visiting those places with my family when I was a kid. The land grants that established those towns were um, communal land grants. They were given to groups of families. Uh, Mora, most of the people came from the Picuris area. And before that, they were from places like Abiquiu, Santa Cruz de la Cañada, uh, Santa Clara, San Ildefonso. Uh, that middle Rio Grande Valley area of northern New Mexico. The people of Las Vegas uh, came from San Miguel del Vado, Peco, Santa Fe, and even uh, Rio Abajo. I have routes that run through San Miguel del Vado down into the uh, Bernalillo and Sandia Pueblo area of New Mexico. So these people were moving around and traveling. Um, it's the mid-1800s, we'll see, once we start moving out of our uh, Mexican period and into our American territorial period, we'll see that uh, the Nuevo Mexicanos start to expand out into places like Conchas, T Trementina, uh, Anton Chico, Chaparito, and places beyond. So... I'm glad you were able to take this journey with me. Uh, stick around. There will be more episodes of New Mexico History in 10 Minutes dealing with our period as a territory of the United States and then somewhere out there on the horizon, statehood. Hasta pronto. Bye.